this topic today. Love this topic today. We are going over laminectomy, laminectomy. And it may not seem like, well, it may not seem like the most exciting NCLEX topic, but you cannot talk about laminectomies unless you have had formal education. So this is a topic that the nursing student who has been through med surge, who has been through a neuro class can appreciate. And I'm so excited. Can you guys hear me? All right. All right. So I'm really excited about this topic. And I'm really excited that you are here on this Monday, checking in, making sure that you are doing what you are supposed to be doing as we are trying to get our nursing license, as we are passing the, 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 the milestones, the marker points, and you have a plan and you have a plan. I meet so many nurses who don't have a plan about how they're going to pass NCLEX. All right. So if you're here, then you need to know that my name is Professor Regina and my son RN. I have been a nurse for over 15 years now, and I have been helping nursing students pass NCLEX for just that long. So I do consider myself the number one NCLEX instructor on the planet. And today I will be introducing laminectomies to you. Now this comes from my quick facts for NCLEX book. Love, love, love this book. If you need to get your studying in, in a very short amount of time, then quick facts. Um, and then I saw somebody put the page, but I know the page. I wrote the book and the page is, I need a reference for it, 48. They say it's 48 and it is 48 in quick facts. And this is the reason why this book is so popular, wildly popular, because it's just question and answer. It is question and answer saves time. Woo. Who does not have this book right now? Come on, y'all. Come on. Quick facts for NCLEX. We're going to study laminectomies from this point. So my expectation is that you've read the section of laminectomies. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into a little bit more detail for my audiovisual learners. I'm here to support. I'm here to support the audiovisual learners as well. This comes from my entire NCLEX review. If you have quick facts, then what you're missing are these topics. And this is from the V2. And so the things that I have in quick facts are not the same things that I have in V2 which is why I say get both of them together, get both of them together. It's okay if you are not particularly studying for NCLEX, but you're still in nursing school, we also welcome you here. I have another book that is going to be more appropriate for you. If you're not ready for NCLEX just yet, you can get quick facts for nursing school, okay? You can get quick facts for nursing school. And this is the book as you can see, it focuses on med surge and pharmacology for next gen. So it is the sister to this book, but this one is just like a little, a little bit thicker than the quick facts because you're going to be using this from day one of nursing school until you graduate. All right. So that is why I wrote this book. If you have six months left in nursing school, three months left in nursing school, quick facts for nursing school is for you. But if you're out of nursing school, and you're studying for NCLEX, Quick Facts for NCLEX is for you. So that's the difference that I got when I was doing my meeting group. People would ask me, what's the difference between those two? That's the difference. Um, but in general, if you're preparing for NCLEX, what I want you to understand is that there is a program that has everything that you need into one. So no matter if you're an audiovisual learner, no matter if you are a... Um, a reader, a writer, my full program comes with quick facts, the workbook, and the lectures that I presented, plus the study calendar. And I will talk much more about that towards the end of our, um, our lesson for today, but let's get into it, okay? So we're talking about laminectomy. We're talking about laminectomy. And I do see the question um, here, what is a CAT exam? Uh, do I have to take CGFNS? You guys have some great questions. So I'll reserve just a little time on the back end to go over specific questions. So just write them down somewhere. And then when I open up questions and answers, please bring them back up. Okay. Um, but I want to break into our lesson because laminectomy is a specific procedure 
that you have to understand exactly when you see that word, okay? Exactly when you see that word, how you are to interact with this type of patient because you do not treat the laminectomy patient like the patient in a cast or the patient with um, uh, osteoporosis, the patient in traction, they are treated extremely different, extremely different. So that's what we're going to focus on. Do you know your priorities for the laminectomy? This is good for registered nursing students and practical nursing students. Both of you should be here. What I do on Mondays and Wednesdays is to support the registered nurse on her journey. You will be a registered nurse. Also, the practical nurse on his or her journey as well. And you already know, we're gonna do this content, but then at the end, I have four questions and you can unlock the bonus question by smashing that like button on YouTube, smashing that like button on YouTube. Uh, Nurse Josephine says, Miss Regina, God did. <laughs> I like that, just God did. Isn't that, that should be the, that should be the title of your book. God did. Um, I took my test on 4.9 using only quick facts in V2, as well as the live class here, probably. I finally passed with 98 questions on my second attempt. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this amazing? On the second attempt, 98 questions. That's so close to the minimum. That's so close to the minimum. So you were able to come back, watch this after failing. So many nurses, how many nurses here even today have failed the exam and you're on a journey to try to come back from it? How long have you been in this process of trying to recover, recover from failing the NCLEX? And so what I like about uh, Nurse Josephine, she got the products, she showed up for the classes and on her second attempt, mm, on her second attempt, success. I like that. Congratulations. And so for the rest of you on your next attempt, success, 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 success. Oh, and I see the testimonials. Oh, I see the testimonials of people coming. Some people are saying it's been a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm on the journey. It's been a long time. Um, this will be my third attempt. Congratulations. Wow. 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 All right. Um, I did it in 2020 and now I'm trying to get back on track and retake this year. So you know who you're in the room with. You are in the room with people that are on the same journey as you. But guess what? At the end of the day, we can say, we can say, congratulations. We can say, I am next. We can say, you know, acknowledge people's successes and at the same time be hopeful, be hopeful for our very own. And I think that's the power of this community is nobody's in here pretending. We're not in here pretending like uh this is just, you know what I hate? Let me tell you what I hate. And then I'm going to get into the lesson. I promise you. I promise you I'll get into this lesson. But what we do here is so authentic. And the people that come here are so real and so driven by passion that I see, I see the other, I do, I see the other NCLEX reviews doing these new, these weekly lives that they never did before. Okay. Remar, we were the first people to do these weekly lives, but I see the, I see the weekly lives that come on and I see people fabricating testimonials. And I don't like that. I don't like it. I really appreciate the authenticity of this community and how, when people get on here, I hear I failed. Okay. I did. I just failed yesterday. Um, but I'm trying again, or I hear it's been six months for me and these are real people. And then when we're able to bring those people on, it's just so powerful. So when you're here, I, I would honestly just say to really soak it all in because you're in a room of 600 people who are really authentically on this journey with you. And so you should never feel alone and you should never feel like um, success is not within your reach because it is. It is. Look at this. Look at this. Um, I'm trying to recover. I will pass next attempt. It will be my fifth time. It's frustrating at times. It's frustrating at times. I feel that statement. <laughs> it's frustrating at times, but I keep going. 
Study journey is hard. Study journey is hard. All right. And so um, if it ever you feel like you can't do it or it is too much, understand that that is that is normal and that is a real experience. And I'm, I hope that you find a place that you can talk about it, even if it's just here, because most people do not understand what it is like to go through nursing school. That's 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 a whole different just being able to go through nursing school and graduate is something that many people will never experience. And they don't even want to, to be honest, they're not interested in it. But to have to study for this huge exam that incorporates knowledge from math, biology, English, anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, complex case studies. Most people, and I don't care if you're a lawyer, I don't care any other discipline, you are not required. Even Listen, I'm going to even go say to say this far. You, even as a doctor, you are not required to understand the same things as the nurse because the nurse has to understand her responsibility, the doctor's responsibility, the nurse's aide's responsibility, the licensed practical nurse's responsibility. Nobody's, the dietitian's responsibility, the radio, nobody's asking that of the other professions. Nobody. Because I've seen the tests, I've seen the MCATs, I've seen, they're not asking the doctors, what is the nurse's scope of practice? But they will ask the nurse, what is the doctor's responsibilities? And, and so as we are on this journey, there's so many layers. There are so many layers. Yeah, PTOT, <laughs> that's true. Um, there's so many layers to what we're expected to know. And then when you get into nursing, not only you're expected to do. And so if housekeeping doesn't come into the room and your patient's trash is overflowing, the nurse is expected to dispose of that trash and move it to the next place, you know? And that is what, um, you know, that is the reality of nursing. That is the reality of nursing and what we're called to do. It truly has to be a ministry. All right. That's my soapbox for today. The nurses are responsible for everything. We're responsible for everything. And the, the beauty of it is, is that there are people here today who are jumping into the profession and they're so excited because they passed their NCLEX. And so they're ready to take on all of that. They are ready and they they are prepared for it. Okay. So that will be all of us. That will be all of us. We are definitely the resource of the hospital. We are definitely the heartbeat of wherever we work, wherever we work. So God bless you all. God will keep us in it. God will make us thrive like it. God will keep on. He will be very, very, very gracious to us. All right. We'll get our wings. We'll get our rings. Nurse says, Stan Nurse Sandra says, um, hi, Professor Regina. I took my NCLEX PN, practical nurses. Yes, representing on April 5th, 2024, on my first attempt. And I found out I passed on 4-9 using V2 and Quick Facts, thanks to you and Mark. Oh, man. Esther says, to God be all the glory. I passed NCLEX PN on 11-24, my first attempt with 86 questions, thanks to Team Remar. And so I just want to say what I'm doing in the quick facts right now um, in the V2, I'm actually going through V2 and I am looking at the exams and I am updating the exam. So, for example, yesterday, for those of you who want to get back into V2, I um, I redid the maternal and child health exam in the PN section. And then I think I also worked on the clinical pharmacology exam in the V2. So what I'm doing is I'm changing the questions. I'm adding case studies or next gen, just because for me, because I go through this program often too, and I don't want to keep doing the same questions over and over again. So I am doing um, update work in the V2 even now as we speak. So if you are just starting the V2, you're going to be getting different questions in the exams. And I hope you like them. I hope you like them. All right. So we're going to do laminectomy. I also do have a wonderful motivation for today too, but let's get into laminectomy. So when we are talking about this very complex 
um, surgical procedure, know that it is not done and it is not taken lightly. There is a lot of consideration as to when a patient will get a laminectomy because what happens is you have the what? The ectomy. So ectomy means what? Whenever we see ectomy on the end of something, we know we are taking it out. We are removing it. And what we're removing here is called the lamina, the lamina. And so the lamina is a segment that surrounds the spinal column. So the laminectomy is the surgical procedure where you remove the lamina, all right? Or a part of the covering of the spinal column. Huge, huge, huge ordeal. Um, and so the idea is that if a patient has um, compression, this herniation, that this will help relieve some of that pressure, all right? So I have here for my readers, it says, this release pressure on the spinal cord or nerve roots caused by an injury, a herniated disc, canal narrowing, or what we would call spinal stenosis, or a tumor, or a tumor. And so the patient who gets this procedure, they are in typically a lot of pain or they're having a lot of numbness. Okay, so this is the last effort. And anybody with back pain, particularly in nursing, we have to be so careful with our backs. We have to be so careful with our backs because what do we do a lot of in nursing? What do we do a lot of in nursing? Oh my goodness, you don't want to mess up your back in nursing, and especially very early on. So the doctor may recommend a laminectomy if uh, other treatments, conservative treatments such as medication or physical therapy do not relieve the symptoms. If it gets to a point where standing or walking can become difficult because of muscle weakness or numbness, the laminectomy may be suggested. If the patient, because they're losing innervation, has loss of bladder or bowel control, or if a patient has a herniated disc, the laminectomy may be a part of the treatment, the surgical procedure for that. And so again, we talk about a laminectomy, the surgeon might have to cut out a portion of the lamina in order to reach that damaged disc. So a laminectomy is a general term. It's a very general term, and you need to add the location to that laminectomy because think about how long the spinal column runs. So I always have this person in the back. Actually, this is a teaching tool that I, I got for my kids to show them what the inside of their body is like. And as parents and as nurses, it's our responsibility to educate our children on what their body is made for what their body is made for. So this was something that I, I, it was super helpful for my kids to understand that they have, and it actually has little organs, but that they have one heart, two lungs, the kidneys, things like that. So when we talk about the spinal column, you cannot just tell a patient that they're gonna get a laminectomy. You can't because the spinal column runs from top to bottom right? All right. And so you have to be specific. And as the nurse, you know, these terms that we're about to go over where that laminectomy is going to happen. And so we have here, what do we have here? Patient may be getting a cervical laminectomy. Laminectomy may be lumbar or sacral. What conditions does a laminectomy manage or treat? And so again, this is not going to be, this is not going to be for everything. This is not going to be for everything. But particularly um, if a patient is going to have specific arthritis, okay? So for example, my dad has a lot of issues with his back. 
He has arthritis throughout his back and his back is constantly a problem for him. Some of you know patients or you yourself even have arthritis that presents itself in the back. And so because of that, because um, the patient loses cartilage, because the patient loses fluid, that you have to get procedures like a laminectomy to be able to relieve the pressure, to be able to relieve the pressure. So arthritis specifically um, to the back is going to be a reason. Bone fractures as well bone spurs, all these things can happen along the spinal column, degenerative back conditions, herniated discs, spinal stenosis, and then tumors or abscesses in the spine. Okay. So particularly not maybe in the beginning, but when a patient starts to have constant back, shoulder, neck pain, if they start to lose feeling in their um, their arms, their legs, that they have tingling and numbness, that can be due to stenosis or compression. And then, yes, your spinal column, you know, if it is in a certain area that you're having stenosis, you will have bowel and bladder problems. These are the tests that can be done to help diagnose what the issue is. Simple x-rays of the spine will show compression, disherniation, uh, a myelogram, this is where you use contrast to actually visualize the spinal column. But again, it's rarely used, rarely used. Rarely do you not do you need to do that because you will be able to see with the x-ray, a CT scan, or even the MRI as well that can help you visualize the, the spinal column as well as the soft tissues around the spinal column. And so that's what the MRI is going to be used for. Now, what are some... I go over this, I think, in the, v, in the V2. Which one is longer, the CT or the MRI? If we wanted to have a quick, quick picture of our patient's spinal column, will we send them for the CT or will we send them for the MRI? Which one? Uh, things you need to know. I said, which one was quicker? Which one was quicker? Okay. Or did I say which one was longer? I can't remember. Yeah, okay. These were like, the, okay. So the MRI is longer. The MRI is longer. The CT is quicker. Just so we're clear. So if a patient comes in the emergency room and they're com reporting, I don't want to say complaining, they're reporting back pain, which one should we send them for? the CT or the MRI, always the CT, because the MRI is going to take longer, which is going to delay the treatment. And NCLEX will put the MRI on there because the MRI is going to give you what? What's the benefits of the MRI? The MRI is going to give you more detail, which is great. It's great, but in an emergent situation, you don't really need the fine details. You need the big problem quickly. So in case studies, in priority situations, always go with the CT. Always go with the CT. Okay. So after this procedure, you know, laminectomies generally considered safe, but it's a surgery. So surgeries are going to open your patient up for certain complications. And as a nurse, you need to be able to look a patient in the face and say these things. And at the same time, be reassuring them, right? That's what our, that's, that's the difficulty of being a nurse is that when a patient has a laminectomy, after that laminectomy, what are we going to be monitoring them for? We're going to be monitoring them for bleeding, for infection, for blood clots. Why blood clots? Why do we have to tell their patient, why do we have to tell our patient that they may have blood clots after a laminectomy? Why is that? Mm, DVTs, yeah, but why? Why, why blood clots? And, and these are the reasons why a patient may say, mm -mm, 
I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Yes, because of they're not able to move around. They're going to have limited mobility after this procedure. And so that puts them at risk for DVTs. Yeah. They're going to be on bed rest. They're not going to be able to move. So blood clots, right? In most surgery surgeries, if your patient's going to be down for 8, 12 hours, blood clots. Also pregnancy. Don't forget our pregnant women who in, in the Western culture, they labor in bed. They labor laying down. So that also puts them at risk for DVTs. I know a lot of pregnant women who had a DVT after pregnancy. All right. Nerve damage, of course. Spinal fluid leaks, quadriplegia or paraplegia. Quadriplegia or paraplegia. Damage to the dura, the dura, delayed instability and numbness and weakness. So not only are we educating our patients to the benefits of the procedure, we do have to tell them what we are looking for as part of our assessment. So this is a procedure that should not be taken lightly. It matters who does it. It matters who does it. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, post-operative symptoms that the patient is able to tell us. So this is the patient's responsibility. That's why it's great to have a good working relationship with your patient. So they can say, if you notice, or if I notice, or if your nurse's aide notices skin discoloration, um, you know, swelling, foul odors, sometimes you can smell an infection and you don't necessarily have to see it, but something just doesn't smell right, you need to know. Tenderness or edema in the legs if the patient is retaining fluid. Increasing pain in the areas of the, the belly, the abdomen, the shoulder, or the incision site. Fever, lightheadedness, bladder or bowel control issues. Breathing or swallowing difficulties, of course, and if the the drainage of the surgical site is persistent if it doesn't stop. Yep. <laughs> Our nursing assessments, now these seem long, but I was thinking, you know, perhaps there is even a nursing student that hasn't had this particular subject and they need to understand our responsibilities. So as nurses, when you're working in a surgical unit or even med surge, they always tell us to start in med surge. We have to do assessments. And so looking at the patient's past medical history is part of that. Listing the patient's current medications. Why do we list or why do we need to know the current medications before a surgical procedure? What are our nursing priorities for that? Okay. Our nursing priorities are what? Because medications can interact with what? Anesthesia, right? And also some medications can cause our patient to do what if they are cut open? Mm -hmm. If they're cut open, possible interactions for sure. And then bleeding. Yes. A lot of medications thin the blood. They're, yeah. And so it'll increase their risk for bleeding. And so those are huge points on your NCLEX exam that you can just be aware of and be looking for. You can be looking for them. Identifying client allergies. Don't really have to talk much about that, but we want to make sure as, as we always see when we do our live events, we don't want to administer medications that our patients are clearly allergic to. Right. Um, the uh, neurological health before the surgery, so establishing a baseline. The patient's emotional status is very important because if a patient is not comfortable or they are anxious about a procedure, then what will they not be able to do? They will not be able to learn. And this is why I tell you all the time, you have to address that test anxiety because if you have an over amount of test anxiety, you will not be able to learn. You will not be able to re retain. It is the same as our patients. Okay. Another thing is that when a patient is anxious, 
and they're nervous, how does that affect how they experience pain? Somebody talk about that. When our patients are nervous and they don't feel emotionally supported, how do they experience pain? They experience it to a much greater level, okay? So normally things that they would be able to just breathe through, when you're nervous and anxious, you you can't. It's like you scream at the smallest things because you're just your anxiety is so high. And so that complicates treatment as well. Yeah, the increased pain. So those are the little things that we are to be learning in nursing school about the art and science of nursing. And if you miss those things and they show up on your exam, then you would have missed the opportunity on a very easy question. All right. Um, ensure the patient has received sufficient uh, information regarding the laminectomy surgery. So in other words, that the doctor has talked to them, the doctor has gotten the consent for the surgery. You should make sure there is a consent for surgery before doing any preoptive care for that patient. Identify the patient's initial pain level and location, yes, and assess the patient's breathing conditions. Always want to make sure you know the patient's breathing conditions because if you are putting a patient under anesthesia and they have a background of smoking, CHF, COPD, asthma, um, any emphysema, bronchitis, seasonal bronchitis, <laughs> those will affect whether the patient's able to recover from that anesthesia. Uh, Post-procedure, we are administering pain medication to our patients as ordered. Uh, somebody says, I was so anxious in the NCLEX. Yes, 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 yes. I, I forgot how to read at one point. I believe that. I believe that. And that anxiety, we have to work on it. All right. We will. We will. We will. I feel, I feel an anxiety workshop coming on. I feel like we need to do the anxiety workshop again. All right. Tell clients to use pain scale to convey their pain level. Yes, provide non-pharmacological pain management strategies for our patients. We can do that. Distraction, relaxation, comfortable positions. Ensure the client is properly positioned. Y'all already know, if you have quick facts, the position for this patient. Encourage early mobilization, following the surgeon's advice to avoid problems, okay? such as DVT, and then inspect surgical incisions for infection, discharge, or skin breakdown. Change dressings as directed using strict aseptic procedures. And very important because we do not want a patient to get an infection in their spinal column. We don't want that to happen. That can lead to sepsis very quickly. Also nursing interventions, there's a lot. There's a lot when you when you want to work in surgery, be prepared for all of this. Consistently evaluate and document the client's neurological status, including motor and sensory function. You know, we have motor neurons and sensory neurons back to A and P and any indications of neurological impairments. Notify the healthcare provider if we see any changes. Again, the in infection control, huge point for NCLEX teaching the client and caregivers about proper hand hygiene and infection control, that's the nurse's responsibility. The doctors are not going to do that. PTOT is not going to do that. That's what the nurses do. And then also we, are also, we are also monitoring urinary output and urinary retention. That's huge after a spinal surgery. All right. Again, Everything that I do for you is to support you as you are on the journey for passing your NCLEX. And the social media videos on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok are definitely there, but it is not the same as the full program. I say this over and over again because I get messages from Remar nurses who failed the NCLEX, and it is because they don't use all of the weapons to fight the NCLEX. 
So if you're just using quick facts and you're just using the YouTube videos, that's not the full program. That's like just the sword. Okay. And so I want to save you time in this process by giving you my very best recommendations, which is to get everything that I created for you to be successful. And the difference between having the study, look, and this is the thing. So my program comes with the study calendar and I like to keep it here because it guides me. So this is the study calendar, okay? In the study calendar, every single day, it will tell you what part of the program you are focused on. And so if you have the study calendar, but you can only do the things in quick facts, you still have to get that other information because age specific nursing care, developmental milestones, those are not in quick facts. So my goal of you having the videos and the V2 is so that you don't have to just do the stuff in quick facts and then go to somewhere else. You know, I don't know if you're using Kaplan or, you know, videos on YouTube or Archer or whatever to try to get those other things. Because when you mix NCLEX reviews together, listen, when you mix NCLEX reviews together, what happens is you get confused and or you don't understand what you were intended to understand. And so you feel really comfortable because you've been doing a lot of work. But there is a difference between feeling right and actually being right. And so when you feel like you're doing a lot of work, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have made the progress that you needed to make. And mixing NCLEX reviews is one of the worst things that you can do. So I would rather tell people, just go and do, just go and do whatever that you've been doing. Don't mix it with Remar. Don't mix it with Remar because then that's another battle that you'll have to address later that I don't want you to. Okay. Um, Nurse Gertrude says, and Gertrude is my, it's my daughter's favorite name. So I love saying this, Gertrude. Hi, Professor Regina. God is good. I took my RN NCLEX on 4-11-24, received an email on 4-12, and I, look, the next day, I love that, and I passed using V2 and Quick Facts on my first attempt as an international nurse. Thank you, Professor Regina. Thank you. Huge congratulations, because we know, where are you from? People are asking where you're from. We know the complexities of the international paperwork that you had to overcome and then being able to pass on your first try. Amazing. <laughs> being able to pass on your first try. Amazing. So um, I, I say all that is that I'm glad that you're here. I'm happy that everybody who is here is here, but I do want to give you my best recommendation. I do want to give you my best recommendation. And that is always to, to take everything into battle when you show up for the NCLEX, because it is indeed a big fight. But when you do it right, you come out with that license. Um, they're saying she's from Ghana. She's from Ghana. Thank you. Now, when can I get the V2? I see a lot of people passing exam using V2. Yes, V2, super easy. Just go to my website, remarnurse.com, remarnurse.com, and you are able to tap into the V2. Just pick whether you're an RN or you're a PN because I have programs for either one, either one. And what I love about it is that it does have all of the next-gen technology. So not only are you getting the lectures, let me show you, not only are you going to get the, the lectures as well, but we do have um, the question bank here, which you'll be able to do those next gen questions. So when you get the V2, if you tap right into the second icon here, all right, you'll it'll take you to the question bank. There's over 2,000, 2,600 questions in the question bank just waiting for you to do. And you're able to just create a test. Look here, you're going to be able to create a test, picking the subjects that you want. <coughs> Oh, thank you. God bless me. Oh my goodness. Um, picking the different subjects that you want when you're ready to do questions, it'll be there for you. Um, but like, again, the question bank is part of V2 and you will be able to do all those next gen question types. And you're also able to, to retake tests again, preview tests again, 
Like the answers is there. Partial credit. We have, I just love it. Like I really love the technology of the V2. It looks like nothing else, but it is is so worth it to allow you to get what you need to get in the most amount of time. So com comprehensive NCLEX review like never before. And you know who created it. You know the instructor and you know how I get down. I want you to succeed. I want you to succeed. So everything that we do is for you to get that nursing license and to come back and give a testimony. Come back and get a testimony. So your blessing, your blessing is going to be determined on your actions. Always, 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 always. Okay. So right now it's time for NCLEX questions. It's time for NCLEX questions. We talked about laminectomy. Um, these questions are actually coming from the V2 question bank. I am so excited to do them. But first, I have to do this. I have to tap into our share goals because this is the part where you are involved. So we have, all right, so for the Remar channel, okay, how many people on YouTube do we have watching right now? So we have, I'm looking at myself. Okay, so we have 674 of you on YouTube. How many likes do we have? 208 likes. So all we need to get to is 375. So out of 670, we just need to get to 375. So if you have not liked it, go ahead and smash that like button. I'm going to do the first question to give you time, but it's laminectomies. And the fifth question is so good. So please unlock it today. Okay, question number one is this. The nurse assesses a newly admitted client scheduled for lumbar laminectomy the following day. Which of the following findings should the nurse report immediately to the doctor? Number one, loud, high-pitched bronchial breath sounds. Two, productive cough. Three, Urine output of 850 milliliters for 24 hours. Or four, intermittent, low-pitched abdominal sound. Oh, these laminectomy questions are so good today. You did the content with me. Now this is when you do questions. Not before. Because if you have not done the, the content, let me repeat that. If you have not done, if you have not done the content with me, these questions are going to be more difficult than they have to be, which is why I tell you, don't just jump into a question bank. Don't just jump into the question bank. The very most important step is studying the content right here. All right. So this is, I see the answers on the screen. I got to read this comment because Esther says it's very true. At the beginning, I was messing around. Even though I have Remar products, I got confused. And I said to myself, this is what she said. Now, Esther passed. She said, Esther, put everything else away and focus on V2 and ClickFax. And we know Esther passed the NCLEX. So speaking, right? Esther is preaching. She's preaching today to the choir. Y'all know what y'all need to do. I see a lot of twos and I see a lot of ones. And I just see twos and ones. Okay, so we got it down to two. What is the priority here? The priority is going to be the abnormal assessment, the one that is the worst, the one that gives you the alarms. It is going to be to the productive cough. Productive cough. If your patient has a productive cough, that could be, what could that be? Uh, yeah, what, where do, what condition do we see a productive cough for? CHF, all right, a breathing issue that could be uh, an infection, and so those are the things that would actually cancel a surgery. Those are the things that would cancel a surgery until there is an investigation done. Because if your patient has a productive cough and it's congestive heart failure, and they don't know that they have that, then the doctor is going to say, I need to get an echocardiogram. I need to get consult with cardiology. I, maybe it's pneumonia. All right. Yes, yes, yes. And so for that reason, a further evaluation is needed, all right? And so that is why the productive cough is going to be the, the, the one that stops us out of, the, um, out of the choices. And remember, let me go back to this. When we're taking NCLEX, expect everything to be right. Like every, every one of those things are reasons we probably could call the doctor. 
And so you have to be able to prioritize or look for the abnormal assessment and be able to anticipate, okay, based on this assessment, the patient could have this problem. You can't do that without strong content. You cannot do that without strong content. And I don't care how beautiful a rationale is. I don't care if it has pictures. I don't care if it's three pages long. That rationale is not going to allow you to be able to make those connections when the very next thing is a question that is not related to it. And, and, and I'm not saying number one, so people are like, why is it not number one? The loud, high-pitched bronchial breath sounds. First of all, we went, we went over bronchial, we went over lung sounds last week. Remember, when, when we're talking about lung sounds, bronchial sounds are going to be loud. OK, loud, high pitch bronchial sounds that can be considered normal because you have in the bronchial area, you have a lot of air passing through. So those sounds are going to be a lot louder than the vesicular lung sounds. Right. And so that might not necessarily be an abnormal assessment. But even if it is an abnormal assessment, it's not going to be more abnormal for us than the productive cough because you should never have a productive cough, all right? And, and again, that just goes back to content. That literally just goes back to content because we went over that We went over that last week. Um, lung sounds come from quick facts as well. So this book, okay, this book is, it's part of the course, it's part of the course. All right, I'm moving on, I'm moving on. Uh, a client's MRI. Here's question number two. Hey, we're, we're at 330 likes. So we we'll, we'll only need like 50 more. Come on, 50 more and let's get this. A, a client's MRI results show pressure in multiple spinal nerves in the neck. What type of laminectomy is recommended for this condition? Number one, a lumbar laminectomy. Two, a disectomy. Three, a cervical laminectomy, or four, a sacral laminectomy. Location, location, location. I'm expecting everybody to get this one right. I literally everybody. Just based on like this is not critical thinking. You either know it, you just know it, you just know it. Okay, correct answer. Uh, most of you got it right. Most of you know it. It's three. Cervical laminectomy. Okay. The cervical laminectomy removes the lamina, the back spinal portion of the neck. And so this allows for more uh, space to relieve localized pressure. Okay, we got that one right. I'm going to the next one. This one is more challenging. Here we go. 30 more likes, 30 more likes. If you have not smashed that like button on YouTube, now is the time. Here's the question. Okay, here we go. The nurse monitors clients admitted to the surgical unit. Which of the following clients is not appropriate for a laminectomy? Number one, a client with a report of back pain because of osteoarthritis of the spine. Two, a client with episodes of pain in the hips secondary to a herniated disc. Three, a client with numbness of the feet after a vehicular accident. Or four, a client with ankle pain diagnosed with chronic gout arthritis. This is a good one. This is a good one. We talked about the indications for a laminectomy and there is one patient who does not meet the qualifications for a laminectomy. I see you getting it down to, to patient three or patient four in the comments. Those are good. Those are the two that I would be stuck between. So is it three, a client with numbness of the feet after a vehicular accident? Or is it four, a client with ankle pain that was diagnosed with chronic gout arthritis? <laughs> Correct answer. All right, Remar nurses, y'all working it today. It is number four. This patient is not appropriate for a laminectomy, which is going to remove the lamina 
that covers the spinal column. Why? Because they have a local issue and NCLEX gives you the local reason why they have it. They have gouty arthritis. So this patient is not going to need to have their spinal column adjusted because it's just the ankle, right? So we're going to work with that ankle <laughs> to relieve to relieve that pain and relieve that pain. So be very, very careful if you pick three. Let me go back to it really quickly. Three, this client has one of the indications for a laminectomy. They are having numbness. They're having numbness. And so that indicates that there is some compression of a nerve. Now, after the, the vehicle accident, perhaps their spinal column was damaged. Perhaps their spinal column was damaged or in misalignment. And so we would, we would think, okay, that a laminectomy might be appropriate. But four, no way, no way. All right, content first, then questions. Let me try another one. Let me try another one. Are you ready for it? Let's go. And remember, we do this every Monday and every Wednesday. I'm here to challenge you. Okay, question number four. Mm, okay, let me see, did we unlock it? Come on, y'all, we only need 11 more likes. 11 more likes on YouTube. Subscribe. Let's do it. All right. A client who underwent lumbar laminectomy is being transferred to the PCU, okay, from the recovery room. What position should the nurse place the client in bed? Number one, high Fowlers, two, supine, three, Trendelenburg, four, dorsal recumbent. Okay. This may be our final question. This may be our final question. And this is an easy one because I really wanted y'all to get to the next question. I was trying, trying to get us there. <laughs> so this easy question, of course, everybody knows. Of course, everybody knows. Oh, somebody for dorsal recumbent. Hmm. Correct answer, though, is absolutely number two, supine. Patient has to be flat. Patient has to be flat. And so... This is the position to maintain after the lumbar laminectomy. And also don't forget, we are, how are we moving this patient? Because this patient does need to be moved. You can't theoretically just lay flat in the bed all the time. That's not something that's possible. So when we move this patient, what is the term that we, what is the term that we use for moving our patient? We, mm, log roll our patient. There we go. We log roll our patient. We log roll our patient. Very, very good. Okay. So did we get it? Yes, we got it, guys. Congratulations. We did it. Guess how many likes we have? I asked for 375. And because you know the importance of teamwork, we have 393. We reached the likes. Oh, right. All right. <sighs> challenging. You guys like to be challenged. I get it. All right. Okay. Here's the question. This is our fifth question that you unlock. Bonus question right now is this. The nurse is caring for a client who underwent a laminectomy. Which intervention is the highest priority postoperatively? Number one, monitoring temperature for signs of infection. Two, Obtaining an arterial blood gas for oxygenation status. Three, determining neurovascular status. Or four, establishing a baseline for physical walking activity. So we have postoperatively, is it our priority? And it's not our priority, it is our highest priority. That's the difference, okay? Number one, monitoring temperature for signs of infection. Two, obtaining an arterial blood gas for oxygenation status. Three, determining neurovascular status. Or four, establishing a baseline for walking ability. So we are dealing with the surgery. This is a very complex question because we're dealing with a surgery patient, a spinal cord patient. Um, we're dealing with the need for strict aseptic technique. I told you that. Um, 
we need to know our patient's baseline, all the things, oxygenation status, all of these things are so important. And these are the things that NCLEX will ask you about. They're so important, but give me the most important. Give me the most important. And I see the comments on the screen. This is the beauty of the bonus question. Cause I'm looking to, I'm looking to um, challenge you and divide you. I'm looking to divide you. So the correct answer is going to be, the correct answer is going to be the dramatic pause is ending, is going to be number three. Number three, did you get it? Number three. All right, um, wait, wait, let me go back to this one, make sure. Um, determining the neurovascular status, that's what it is. Determining the neurovascular status of the patient. That is going to be it. Um, let me just read the rationale. After a laminectomy, assessing neurovascular status is the highest priority to detect any signs of nerves, nerve damage. All right. And so the determining the neurovascular status is going to give you an indication of whether that surgery was successful or not. I threw in number two, obtaining an arterial blood gas as a distraction, right? After a laminectomy, getting the arterial blood gas is not going to be, it's not going to be ordered or it's not going to be a priority. But if I just put getting an arterial blood gas, you would have never picked that. But because I put for oxygenation status, I was able to trick a lot of people. So I'm just taking you through how distractors are created. So a distractor is usually paired with an important term so that we're able to determine if you really know the information or if you're just trying to memorize tricks and tips and hacks. So yes, airway, breathing, circulation is a good hack. It's a good trick, but it is really not able to be applied to every situation. All right. Um, let's see, other people picked, nobody picked monitoring for infection, which is good. Not too many people picked that. Remember, when, when you talk about surgery in general, and let me just take a moment to explain this. When you talk about surgery in general, it would be the untrained person that would think that infection is a priority. It would be somebody who has not really um, been educated on infection principles that would think the surgery was the highest priority, that would, infection was the highest priority after surgery. And it's for a very simple point. What is the point of why infection is not usually the highest priority? Does anybody know? After a surgery. It is because Typically, infections take how long to manifest, right? 48, 72 hours. And so if we're talking about post-operatively, mm -mm, mm -mm, it doesn't occur immediately. Exactly. So these are just the, these are the separation points between a nurse that is in learning and a nurse that is prepared or mastered, okay? And that's it. And that's it. And so that is the importance of coming to this class, because I don't ever want you to leave feeling like you are not. Mm, I don't I don't I guess more importantly, I don't ever want you to leave here thinking that, you know, it all. That's it. I think that that is the most important thing. I don't really care how many wrong you get here. You're in class to learn. So if you didn't get something right then the purpose of you coming to class was served because you're here to learn something new, right? Um, and so I think in general, we are, are we all are on a learning phase. We're, and then we're all arriving to our destinations at the, at the unique time that it's supposed to be. And that takes us to our motivation. Just, just, just hear me out here. Trust his timing. Trust his timing because it's easy for us to look at our left and our right and see other people and look at even when people put up like how well they did in the questions and then you put up how well you did and it's not the same, 
right? It seems like everybody's getting them all right, but you're not, right? Trust his timing, okay? Um, this is this is the, the point for today, the Good Samaritan. It comes from Luke chapter 10, 30 and 37. And if you've read this story before, I want you to, I want you to look at it again with this perspective. So for those of you who don't know, Luke, it, it tells a story about a man who was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he was attacked and beaten up, right? So some misfortune fell upon him. He, he encountered a bad thing happening to him that he wasn't planning for, that he wasn't prepared for. And these robbers beat him badly, like beat him badly. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. You know, it's bad when somebody takes the clothes off of your back and leaves you naked, right? That's a really bad encounter. Um, and, and then this, the man is laying there. They're, they're, they're laying there in a priest coming down the road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. My, my, my. You would expect the priest to have stopped. You would expect the priest to at least have prayed for the man. Like at least have prayed for the man. He didn't. Pass by. On the other side. <laughs> Separated himself on the other side. So too, another person came, a Levite. Levites, if you know them, they are masters of the law. They're, they're masters of the Bible. They are considered wise, educated. They have a, a priestly ministry. He came to the place and he saw the man. And at the same time, he too passed him by. And so even now, even in your life, if you're thinking uh, the places sometimes where you expect the most help, you don't get it. The people who you expect to be the most encouraging, you don't get that from them. The Bible says, but then a Samaritan and then a Samaritan as he traveled, came to where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. And took care of him. And the, the Samaritan is someone who was considered um, not the enemy, but they weren't liked, right? Right. They were considered less than. They were considered those who um, were not really capable of having the same social status as a, a, a Jewish Israelite person, right? But the Bible says that it was in that person that compassion was found. And actually, if you go a step further, love and care was found. And, and the next day he took out two denarii and gave to the innkeeper. He took the man to a hotel and he told the owner, he said, here, look after him. And when I come back, I will reimburse you for anything else that you might have spent on this person, <laughs> on this stranger that I have just met. Oh my goodness. Isn't it so good when you find that you are loved and cared for in unexpected places. It's a short story, but the idea and the takeaway is that you can always count on God to be with us, to provide for us. The right help, number two is this, the right help will come to you. And it's a major blessing when it comes to you in unexpected ways or things that you don't have to do in order to get it. Sometimes we we hit our head against the walls because we are returning to things that don't serve us or we are expecting uh, a handout or we are expecting uh, assistance in places. We are expecting acknowledgement in places that 
it's never going to come from. Okay. Um, and three, the actions of a person. Whoo, this one right here. The actions of a person speak louder than words. Oh my goodness. Did you know that a person can have a title but not necessarily have the characteristics of that title? Oh, or in this, whew, listen to this. In our lives, we can give people titles that they are not deserving of based on their actions towards us. Oh my goodness. A friend behaves as a friend. Does that make sense? A friend in your life should have certain qualities towards you. A, a sister, a brother, a mother, you know, you know. And so sometimes I, I think that we really do have to understand that, number one, thank God we're not alone. <laughs> Even though we feel lonely, we're not alone. Um, it, but at the same time, I think the story is to tell us that everything that everything that happens to us is to be a lesson. Sometimes it's for us and sometimes it's for other people. But your story is definitely being told and it's being shared and it's being watched. I don't care what you say. People are watching you. People are watching you. And, and so as we went over this story, I think we need to we need to see who we are in the story. That's another point, because it's interesting to to just believe that we are the, the person who was robbed and beaten and naked. Right. There's like, oh, me, I'm, I'm the victim. But sometimes you're not the victim in the story. Sometimes you're the priest. Sometimes you're the Levite. And you should be um, extending more grace to people. And God has put people in your way that you have not helped and that you have walked on the other side of the street. My, 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 my. Um, and so in that story, where do you see yourself? Right? It's deep. I love it. I love it. However, that's what I love about the Bible. However deep you want to go, the Bible is deeper. It can take you there deeper. Um, but I love how we look at this uh, story once a week, once a week. Oh, my goodness. So this was a scripture that really, I saw it last night and then this morning it came back up. But it is Isaiah 60, 22. And somebody... Somebody needs to know this scripture and write it down because Isaiah 60, 22, if you had it on your hearts and if you keep it on your heart this week, it will zero all of your issues. It will zero all of your issues. And Isaiah 60, 22 says, when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. That's it. And we have to be willing to wait. And we have to be willing to be still. And we have to be willing to trust. We've been talking about faith. We've been talking about faith on these Mondays and it is not our own actions. Least we should boast, right? But it is really that faith that everything that is happening is happening in a perfect timing for your good so that you can have this character that allows you, you can have this character that allows you to go through things that people wonder, how is she doing it? 
How is he doing it? Right? It is for you to be able to understand that when the time is right, not when you're ready, not when you think it's right, but when it actually is right. <laughs> and that was what I had said earlier. Come on, Lord. Come on. That's what I said earlier. It's a difference between feeling right and actually being right. And as I as I come to learn, the older I get, the way I feel isn't always the best, right? The way I feel things should be is not always the way that they should be. And so I have to be on a faith walk, just like you. We're all on this faith walk that when the time is right, it's going to happen for us. And because we don't really know what the future holds, it's best we think positive about it. It's best we be thinking about the positive things that can come our way because we get no fruit from focusing on the negative. We, we get no benefit from focusing on the negative. And so as I am um, endeavoring to encourage you on this journey, the best thing that I can tell you is to have hope, have hope for a future, right? And understanding that during this time, no matter how difficult it is, you are building up a character that will sustain you. Sometimes when things are easy, people don't appreciate it. And nursing is not easy. And when you come into nursing and you don't have the character, let me be clear. When you don't have the character of Christ in nursing, you will be in a battle every single day because you will constantly be offended. You will constantly feel like somebody is talking down to you. You will not understand why you have to give the bath. You will not understand why you have to take out the trash. My goodness. And so everything that we are going through today is for a future purpose, is for a future purpose. I'm preaching to myself. I just hope that y'all are just <laughs> enjoying this journey because this is actually for me. This is actually for me. God says, when the time is right, I will do it. I'm going to do it. And that is, that is the hope. That is our joy today. That is the joy for today. So thank you all so much for coming to the class today. Um, we have a lot to be grateful for. We have a lot to think about and move forward with. Now, I promised you question and answer section. So um, I want to spend a couple, I know I've, I've kept you for so long. I've kept you for so long today, but we needed it. We needed it. So I do want to, those of you who are, you know, you're, you're done, you have no questions, I will uh, dismiss that portion of the class. You guys have a wonderful Monday. Have a very wonderful Monday. And I will see you on Wednesday, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. We'll come back again and we will study. Uh, for the rest of you, some of you had questions and answers for me. You had questions and answers for me. So I want to open up as much as I can. I'm happy to be back in my studio. I'm able to use the things that I have to just talk to you all and explain things to you. So I just want to take a moment to do that. Okay. What are the questions? What are the questions? Bye everybody. All right. The rest of you that will have questions and answers, let's stay. Um, thank you. Nursing content, God's word. Yes. On this platform. Definitely. You're definitely going to get both. Always, always, always. God bless everyone. No questions. Uh, is no questions. Good morning. I love you. I love when you preach. It's so motivating. God is good. We love you. Thank you. Oh, where can I get the dummy for your demonstration to buy? Ah, oh, this dummy. Hold on. Let me see if he has a name. I believe I got him on Amazon. Now, it'll look like this, but it also has organs that you stick into the slots. So I would just look at it. I would just look for this on Amazon. And I don't actually, I don't have the box anymore, but this is the one I always keep. But yeah, it's a teaching tool for my kids. They... 
they they loved it when when I first got it. Now they know like mommy keeps it, but that's it. Um, can I talk about the the next the about the gin in the book? Can you talk about the gin in the book? Rewrite that. Rewrite that today, please, and explain it to me. Let me. I want to be able to do it. Okay, how much is the V2 as of today? All right, so let, let's just go, let's do it together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to purchase the V2 and then also we'll see the prices of it right now. All right, so if you go to your browser and you put in remarnurse.com, you're gonna come up to my website. It's gonna look like this. And then you will be able to join the free trial of the V2 if you want to or you can go right to the program. So just go to our courses, it's right here. So let's click on it. You're either a registered nurse or a practical nurse. So let's look at registered nurse. The prices are going to be the same. When you click on registered nurse, it'll say join V2 right here. You can also read more about it. Ah, here we go. All right, so the timing of the V2, one month, three month, or six months. A lot of nursing people have been using the six month program because they are either in the process of nursing school, they're using it for nursing school exit exams, or our international nurses, you know, with your paperwork and all those things, it can take a lot longer. So these are the prices, one month for $99, and that includes everything. That includes the lectures, the quick facts, the downloadable workbook, the calendar. You get the same thing in the three month, you get the same thing in the six month. Now, now listen, the only difference between these packages is how long you have access to them. So if you have a test date coming up here in the next month, you need the 30 day program. Go in there, do the program, and then be prepared for your exam. If you know that you are having a test date, but you're not ready, either change the test date or do this program ferociously. Those are the options, okay? Right now, um, you cannot just buy the question bank, all right? Everything comes together. Is it possible to get a downloadable V2 workbook that I can print? Yes, absolutely. I will show you how to do that, all right? Um, uh, let me see what else. Okay, so let me show you guys how to purchase the V2, how to take out the quick facts if you already have it, and also I wanna show you how to delay your start date because you do all of that at the same time. All right, um, let me get this clear. Are they having different contents? No, they have the same content. So the same lectures are in every single one of them. You have your question bank, the same question bank are in every single one of them. The two exact, the two, um, Exams are in every single one of them, okay? All right. Now, let me, let's just say you want to do the three month. And then I saw your question. You wrote it again, Kanisha. So I'm going to, I'm going to get to that too, okay? Oh, oh, wait, wait, hold on one second. I did this and this is taking me into the course. I don't want to do that just yet. Let me, let me do it again. Let me do incognito, sorry remarnurse.com so I, it won't log me in when I do that course registered nurse and then it'll have three months let's click on that all right so what's going to happen is here you will put in your account details you do need to always put in your name your password your email address and then you will see what you're getting on this side this is where you are able to um take out the quick facts book if you already have it. So if you already have quick facts, every one of these packages come with quick facts. So if you don't take out the quick facts book, you're going to get another quick facts book. So it's important that you take it out. This is also where you're able to add your workbook, okay? Your physical workbook, because with the V2, you get the downloadable workbook, but you don't get this physical copy. So if you want me to print this out and send it to you, this is where you add that, okay? You can also add first shift here as well too, which is um, first shift is how to dominate your first two years of nursing. So this is the book that I always talk about when um, I, I describe what it's like to be a nurse, things that help you prepare for your on 
the unit job. So it's first shift. You get that here too as well. So if you already have quick facts and you don't need it, you just want the lectures, the question bank, the computer adaptive testing, then this is where you would take out quick facts. But if you have my old quick facts and you don't have this one, this says next gen, you need to upgrade to the next gen version. This is the latest and most updated version. And the difference is you don't have this in your old quick facts. These are the clinical priorities. The clin clinical priorities make a difference, okay? Please, can you do a bow tie case study? Um, I, I'm not going to be able to select bow tie specifically, so I'll have to try to pinpoint that out at a different time because I can't just select bow tie. Okay, so here is where you would, if you don't have next gen quick facts, please get it, okay? Um, if you want the workbook right now, it's a sale going on for it where normally that book is $35. Right now it's just $20. So add that if you want it, okay? But if you want to download and print it out, then you can take it out if you don't want to, okay? I ordered V2, but I didn't get it yet. Okay, so V2 is the platform. Marcia, are you talking about quick facts? Because the platform opens up automatically, all right? So I just want to get an understanding of the things that I will be sending you in the mail. It will just be the quick facts book. Everything else automatically opens up to you instantly. The only thing that you are waiting for, for me to send is quick facts, unless you add this book and then I send both, okay? Okay, no, I got a quick facts, but then I ordered the V2. So if you got quick facts, V2 is already there for you. Okay, it's already there, but let me let me keep going so that maybe I can make it plain. All right, so I send you this book in the mail. It sometimes it'll take three to five days. If you're international, it may take longer depending on the country, but we ship this book everywhere. We ship these books everywhere if you get them. Um, I already have these books in Kenya. If you're in Kenya, my partner Kenyan nurse has these books for you as well. So you can get the V2 through them or you can get it through me and I can ship it to you, okay? Um, so let's go, let's keep going. Okay, so the this right here, if you didn't add the physical workbook, I'm sending you the quick facts. Here is if you want to buy it, but you want to start it later on, so you wanna get it today, but you wanna start it later on, then this is where you go down here to change and which would you see what I did there all I did was click on this button you can click on the calendar or you can click on this button and you're able to delay your start date okay and so that can be changed up to 90 days so most of you maybe you want to purchase it today but you don't want to get started until Friday okay you want to say okay I'm gonna make a firm start this weekend I'm off this weekend I want to start my access Friday and you just do that. And that allows you to have a start date of Friday and you just go through the motions. You fill this out. And then what happens is you are making an account. All you have to do is verify your email. That's it. So maybe that's where you're stuck at. V2 will make sure you verify your email and then you will be popped up to this page right here. When V2 opens up, you will see this right here, okay? And you have the option of doing the NCLEX review. You can look at your 30-day challenge videos, which I'll explain in a minute. This is the 30-day challenge section with this young lady here. And then the third place you can go on the main screen is the testimonials. And that's something you can kind of listen to when you're cleaning or something like that just to inspire you. People talk about how they use the program and things like that. So this is what you're gonna see. You'll have the video player here, but this is what you're gonna come to when you open up V2. Every single time you open it up, you will come to here, all right? Now, 
inside of V2, and this is something that I'm not sending you, you actually have access to it immediately. You can begin to watch your lectures. Now, I don't want you to do that first. The first thing that I want you to do when you get access to the V2 is to find the study calendar. The study calendar is what you are looking for. And a lot of you get V2 and you don't locate the study calendar. So the study calendar is found on the side panel in the file vault, which is the third icon. Okay, watch this. This is where the study calendar is. This is also where your workbook is. So I'm going to the file vault and I'm going to the first tab under here that says course resources. And course resources is going to open up your folder. This is for registered nurses. Practical nurses will have this as well. And the first tab here is study calendar. Now, if you're, if you're on your mobile phone, what I need you to do is click on this. And right where it says download files, download files, you click on this blue arrow. Hope you can see that it's blue. Some people would like to try to click on the file, but you need to click on the download file. So if you're on your phone, scroll over to the very end and then click on download file because this is the first thing that you are looking for when it comes to V2. When it comes to V2. And when you download it to your phone or your computer, you are going to be able to see Okay, this is what I'm actually doing. Okay, this is what I'm actually doing. And so when I'm talking about V2, I'm talking about the lectures. It's the training. It's the online training for the NCLEX. It's the online training for the NCLEX. The writing is so small, I cannot see. No, okay, so I, I made it big. All right, so here we go. Can you see this? Can you guys see this? So every, I'll just read it to you. It says, Remar's V2 study calendar for the registered nurse. This study calendar is designed to make your life easier. Each week, do five study sessions. One study session each day is best to pace yourself. So I only want you doing one study session a day. One study session a day also allows you time to process the information presented. You will need to print the workbook in order for this calendar to be the most effective. Remember to keep your study sessions less than three hours per day. Check off each task once it has been completed. If you follow the calendar, the course will be completed in four weeks, okay? It's okay, Taji. Um, I have a program for RN and for PN. So I'm just showing the RN as a general, okay? So check this out. So this is why I want you to start with the study calendar because every session, you're gonna see what you're watching, you're reading, and you're answering. And that is all I am expecting you to do for that day. That's it. That's all I want you to do for that day. Okay. So what did I say in the beginning? I said you're to do one study session a day. You need to have this book, either this book. And sorry, my face is torn. This book has been on a journey with me. You need to have either this printed book here or you need to have printed out the document that was in the file vault, okay? And really quickly, let me just show you what I mean here. For the file vault, let me go back to this. Your student workbook is right next to the study calendar. So if you don't have me printing that out for you, then you are to download and print this. Okay, Tash, just send me your um, just send me your name and email address and I can look it up for you to see where it is. I don't know, maybe we missed an apartment number or something, but I send I send these books out every day. But if I don't send it out or if you didn't order it, you can print it right from V2. NV2 has this book. 
And so again, it's very important that you print it out because this is what you're taking your notes on. And so I don't want you to have to write all this stuff down when I've written down and made nice fancy charts for you already, okay? But if you try to do this without writing the information down, then it's going to be more difficult, okay? All right, Josie Ann, I'll get to your question in a second, okay? All right, so again, just going back to the study calendar again, I expect you to have your workbook more than anything. Like I'm not even saying quick facts because you can start V2 without quick facts. You don't need quick facts right away to start it. So let's look at study session number three. For example, study session number three right here. What are you doing? When you sit down and you've already done one and two, so Monday, if I was starting study session number three Monday, what am I watching? I'm watching orthopedics and I'm watching basic care and comfort. If somebody's on Team Remar, Taji, I didn't want you to put your, I'm about to delete, hold on one second. Let me delete this. Um, I don't want you to put your information publicly. Send it to me, please, at support at remarreview.com. All right. Um, so if I'm doing study session number three, I'm watching ortho and I'm watching basic care and comfort for the day. That's it. That's it. All right. Ortho and basic care and comfort. I'm reading study session number two notes. And these are the three exams that I'm doing clinical pharmacology, clinical progress, clinical pharmacology too. That's it. This is your plan for today. So that means if I'm watching orthopedics and basic care and comfort, I find those right here in V2. If I go back to my video screen where all of my videos are going to be located, okay, that means for study session number three, I am doing orthopedics. Let me see if I can find it. It's up here. There we go. I'm doing orthopedics right here, this video, and I'm doing basic care and comfort. Basic care and comfort is a 17 minute video. Orthopedics is a 35 minute video. That's it. That's as far. So that's under an hour right there. Taking notes. What else am I doing for that day? I'm reviewing notes and then I'm doing these three exams. These three exams are gonna be right here. Clinical pharmacology exam, clinical pharmacology exam, clinical progress exam. That's study session number three. So when you have a plan, this is all doable. This is all doable, all right? But you have to, be number one, aware of where it is, and you have to be willing to do it, have to be willing to do it. And you see that for study session number three, you're not studying quick facts. You're not doing any practice questions um, from the Q bank. You are literally just focusing on that really good content that's going to make you a stronger, critical thinking nurse. And that's the benefit of the program. Now, when we get to the later study sessions, this is where you're going to incorporate quick facts. This is where you're going to incorporate the question bank. So for example, if I go down to, um, let me see where I have you going into the question bank. Study session number 14. Study session number 14 says watch management of care and legal issues in nursing. Okay, so you'll watch those two videos in the video player. Then you're going to do quick facts work. So you'll be studying quick facts pages 41 through 50. And then you're going to do the pharmacology oral anti-diabetics, natural alternatives, maternity, and then you'll also be doing cultural competence in quick facts. And then you're going to go into the question bank and you're going to do an hour. I said do up to an hour only. Okay, up to an hour only. So let me, let's go into the question bank, right? Here's the question bank. Here's where you will go and you will create a new test. Okay, you'll create a new test. Creating a new test, you're going to name it. And somebody asked, where do I get the computer adaptive exams? You get them from right here. I'm going to show you. Your computer adaptive exam is located here. When you're creating a test, you can create a tutor test. 
where you get the answer after every question, you can create a regular test that behaves by making you do all of the questions first and then the results, or you can create a computer adaptive test. Now, when you create a computer adaptive test, you are not able to choose any of the subjects, okay? And you're not able to choose how many questions you get. It will always be based on your performance and it will be timed up to a maximum of five hours. So with V2, you get two computer adaptive tests that are each five hours long that are gonna behave exactly like the NCLEX. So this is why I say, wait until the end of your course to do the computer adaptive test. Actually, if we look at the calendar, I say when to do the computer adaptive test and it is after study session number 20. So once you complete study session number 20, you can take the first computer adaptive test. So again, this system has everything. It has the question bank, it has the computer adaptive test, it has the lecture. It's just waiting for you to do it. It's just waiting for you to do it. So. For example, maybe if you don't want to do a computer adaptive test because it's not study session number 21, um, you could just take a regular test. And you're able to choose the questions that you want. You're able to choose the difficulty level if you want easy, if you want moderate, if you want hard. Those are there for you. And you're able to choose the subject. Now, I know somebody asked me if um, I could do bow tie questions. I'm not able to just specifically do bow tie questions, but I can if I wanted to, to just do those next gen question types. And so those are the multiple matrix and uh, case studies. I think you can just actually, if you wanted to just do case studies, you could do those too as well. So um, again, or if you want to just do hard case studies, they're, they're there for you as well. There's 21 very challenging case studies. Um, so again, that's the benefit of the question bank. I definitely say reserve this until the end of the content, okay? So that is that. That is what it looks like. It's just, it presents just like the actual NCLEX exam. This is a select three that apply. This is an example of a case study question um, here that you can do and it'll start, this is highlighting it. Um, I, I definitely probably will go back and do this one for real. I just wanna give you the, what it looks like here. We have, this is a XY question that's on the NCLEX. So if you have, you have to get all three of these right in order to get the, the full, you know, the full points. If not, you'll just get partial credit. But this is what makes or breaks you being, this is what makes or breaks you being ready for the NCLEX. It is your ability to have already cleared questions like this. And so I'm just encouraging you, if you don't have a plan or you have been just, you know, watching casually to get in and do the work, to get in and do the work. And this is for RN or PN. NCLEX, you, you're, you're, you're both going to have these types of questions. All right. So really good stuff. Again, NCLEX is about the work that you do at home. It is, it is what you're able to do when you're at home. Are you reading? Are you studying? Are you preparing? All right. And so that is V2. I hope you have a better understanding of it, how you use it, uh, the, 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 the companionship that it offers you, because it's not feasible for everybody to have a private tutor. And it's not feasible for my students to have to go to a class and sit there for four hours or five hours a day. And so V2 was created for the nursing student that needs to study in their own time and that needs to really take control of this process. And so that's what it allows you to do. If you wanna do the case studies and the um, next gen questions, they're there for you. All right. Um, and it'll tell you like uh, sometimes I love it because it'll say if you didn't read it, it'll say, no, I asked for two questions. I mean, two options that are right. And so there's really no way for you not to be able to understand. I don't care if English is your third language or you've been out of school for a long time. 
this trains you for next gen NCLEX. The question types that you see here, few people have. And the ones that do have it, they charge you so much for it. They literally are charging you guys way too much to be able to access this technology. I want you to have it um, for a, a, a reasonable for a reasonable investment. Okay. Um, how about somebody who's challenging the board? If you're challenging the board, um, then you're actually challenging the board to take NCLEX. And so again, this is to prepare you for anybody who's taking the NCLEX exam. This has everything that you need. Whether you're an audiovisual learner, we have the lectures. If you need to write stuff down while you study, the workbook is here for you, okay? The workbook is here for you to write it down in, which is going to help you retain it. Very few um, educational programs for NCLEX come with physical books that are training you and going with you. So um, it's the best of both worlds. And for the prices, all of this stuff is included. All of it is included. Okay, I have my exam soon. Do I need the study calendar? What's soon? What's soon? Um, because even if you have an exam coming up in two weeks or three weeks, the study calendar benefits you because it tells you the order that things should be um, done in. Now, for V2, you're not going to be able to skip around when it comes to the lectures, but it will tell you the order of combining these books, which is a huge part of the program. Okay. So some people, they just, like I said, they just have the quick, they just have the quick facts book. And so they know this quick facts book, like the back of their hand, but they have not studied the topics in the V2 workbook. And so the V2 workbook has all of these extra topics that are not in quick facts that you still need to know. Okay. Um, and so the study calendar is going to give you the way to put them together. Um, people were asking, how do I upgrade my subscription? If you have the trial or if you've already had V2 and you've canceled the renewal, then that means that you go back into the trial. And so how you need to reactivate your V2 is to go into your account. Let me see if I can show you. Um, if I go to the home page here, this is what it looks like. If you go to settings and then go to my account right here, let me just see what it looks like. I don't know. I think it might want to give my, um, I don't want it to give my personal information, but, oh no, you can see it. So if you go to, um, it says my payments and my billing. And so it'll talk about your renewal fee. And then here it'll talk about editing your card for somebody that wanted to change their payment method. And then here you can go to manage right over here, just where I'm scrolling real crazily here, manage your account. And then you should be able to upgrade your account and manage your account from there. That's what I see. Also underneath settings is, oh wait, my account right here. Let me see. Mm, yeah, if you go to my account too as well, that's where you can download your certificate. That's where you can cancel your subscription. That's where you can update your subscription. All those things can be there. I just don't wanna show it because there's personal information on here but go to that manage my account, you'll find it there. Um, cat exam, cat exam turned off at 90 questions, but say you passed, right? So my cat exam is just like the NCLEX cat exam. So it will tell you whether you passed or you failed, it will shut off once you've hit the passing standard, and you'll get a printout that says the categories that you were above passing and below passing in. So it looks just like the NCLEX printout. If you pass that CAT exam, it's not easy. It's very challenging. So congratulations. Um, but the experience that you may be looking for may have been different. My CAT exam doesn't behave like the question bank. So the question bank, you get to look at the questions you missed and all those things. That's where you do that at. The CAT exam is for you to literally simulate your NCLEX, like you've taken the NCLEX. Um, and so you won't have that experience of looking at every question. Uh -uh. 
That's not what I was going for. I wanted something to really reflect what the actual NCLEX does. So congratulations, you passed that CAT exam. It's not easy. Trust me, it's not easy. Um, and I don't even know how many, it took me four hours to do the first one. So congratulations to you. Mm. You're welcome, you're welcome. All right, is that it guys? What else, what else, what else? Um, if you already had V2, and you found yourself, um, for whatever reason, you got off track, you weren't consistent with it, and you're watching and you're like, I really need to get back on this again. It's been months. I, I got it in December or I got it whenever you got it. I always say definitely start over from the beginning of V2, print out a new workbook, and make a commitment to do it as it was intended to be done. Because there's nothing wrong with you getting off track. I think what's more important is that you make the commitment to consistency. Because you only have to study. And I find myself saying this for a short period of time. The things that we are typically prioritizing over the NCLEX. Oh, and I got a meeting I got to go to in nine minutes. I got a two o'clock meeting. I just realized. The things that we find ourselves prioritizing before NCLEX are things that we will have in our lives for a long time, for really a long time. So we have to make a, a determination in our mind that we don't allow those things to come before the NCLEX because when you pass the NCLEX, it gives you more freedom to do those other things. People say all the time, well, I gotta wait until, I failed the NCLEX, but I gotta wait until my kids get older. I got to wait until, you know, this season of my kids basketball is over or things like that. When actually, if you prioritize, if you put aside those things, your kids extracurricular activities, dance, basketball, soccer, those things really should not be coming before your license. Because when you get a nursing license, you're able to give more to your children. They're able to actually do more because you have sacrificed. So really prioritize this. I mean, because you're, you're able to get even your current job, even your current job, you might have to take time away from that job in order to prioritize this bigger investment, this bigger investment. And I know I'm asking you guys to invest into the V2 and into the program, but it's worth it. I'm asking you guys to invest in something that is going to change your life. And I'm not asking for a lot of an investment. The V2 is not $200, it's not 250. It literally is under $100. And that is an appropriate investment to books, technology, and education. That's an appropriate investment. And so don't let that, don't let the, the, the dollars, the little dollars now stop you from making the bigger dollars. Because every other thing that we buy, every other thing that we're purchasing every day is not offering you, most of the things are not offering you any kind of return, to be honest. And I'm just being really, really upfront. Netflix, Disney Plus, movie tickets, all those things that we, we find ourselves purchasing without even thinking about it, most of those things are just for temporary entertainment or instant gratification, especially us who live in the United States. We have a lot of disposable income for things that yield no return. Okay. So do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. I'm I'm I make myself, we make we make ourselves so available to you. We are encouraging you constantly, prioritize. You can do this, can, will, must. Can, will, must pass NCLEX. You know that's our hobby horse, okay? <laughs> you can do this, but at the same time, you have to do it. You're the one that has to do it. And so um, just prioritize. If you have more questions, please email me support at remarreview.com, support at remarreview.com. And for those of you who are watching this and you're pushing through, I see you. You're going through something really difficult 
you're you're struggling, you feel lonely with tears, you are studying with tears, you are watching this. I'm going to tell you, keep going, keep going, because you're going to push your way through it. And then you're going to wake up one day and this struggle is going to be passed. You will have your license. You will be on the other side. And, I, you know, I, I want that. I love that for you. Um, but today might be a little challenging, but I'm going to encourage you to keep going. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. And I'm happy to be here with you. I'm happy to be here with you. So um, again, we will prepare another study session on tomorrow. We will prepare another study session on tomorrow. And it doesn't matter where you are in your journey, okay? Where you are in your journey, um, we have something for you, all right? So if you're studying for NCLEX, come on the class, okay? If you have quick facts for nursing school and you're just a, a, a young nurse starting out, come on the class. And if you are ready for your NCLEX, your training, your NV2, come on to class on Wednesday, okay? Come on to class on Wednesday. I will be here by God's grace, I'm willing to cheer you on, waiting for you, excited for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly believe you can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. See you guys later. Bye-bye.